Hey, you guys, hold on, my microphone. <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> it was in the wrong place. Anyways, I hope you guys are doing good. Sorry, I'm running behind. It's a Saturday. It's AAU season, honey. It's a lot going on in the basketball world, okay? But I hope you guys are doing good. Let me make sure my screens are up. Y'all can hear me. Everything's cool. Okay, I'm glad you guys are here. It's a lot to talk about. It's a lot to get into. All right. <laughs> it's good to see you guys too. Happy Saturday. Oh my goodness. It is a lot to get into. This stream is probably, it's probably all going to be about the whole Kevin Samuel situation. Okay. So let me start by saying this. His death has caused a lot of controversy. I've never seen people so split on one man's legacy on the internet. Like, I haven't seen this really since Hugh Hefner. And I'm not saying he's as big as Hugh Hefner or as polarizing, but y'all know there's a segment of the population who thinks Hugh Hefner is disgusting. You know what I'm saying? He was a R word, a pedo, all types of stuff. And then you got other people being like, oh, you know, he helped usher in the sexual revolutionary and, you know, he hung out with black people. Him and Bill Cosby were best friends. He was on the right side of the civil rights movement. So he has a very complicated legacy, as does um, Mr. Kevin Samuels. Now, let me first say this. OK, let me get this out the way. First and foremost, I was not a viewer of Kevin Samuels material. Um I did not check for Kevin Samuels. The only thing, <clears throat> excuse me, that I knew about Kevin Samuels was when he would go viral. You know, he would say something crazy. The shade room, the spiritual world was always posting him. Um, sometimes Hollywood Unlocked. So that is what I know of Kevin Samuel. And the things that I would see that he would say, it didn't jive well with my spirit. It just didn't. So I figured, okay, well, he's not really my cup of tea, but to each its own. I remember I did the video on Kevin Samuels versus Umar Johnson, and I stated my opinion. I had no dog in this fight. I just found it funny that they were beefing, right? And I think that's really the only video I've ever done on Kevin Samuels. And I remember people would send me stuff all the time. T, he said this about Black women. He said that about Black women. You need to go in on him. You need to drag him. And... Like I've said before, my thing is this. I'm not understanding if he's saying all this crazy stuff about black women and it's bothering your spirit. Why are y'all watching him? See, we're going to have some real conversations today. And a lot of y'all might be pissed off at me. A lot of y'all might feel away. But at this point, I don't care. OK, child, it, it's getting ready to be spring in Minnesota. The snow has melted. I'm feeling good. I'm ready to have these real conversations because my thing is, it was y'all. I'm not saying all of y'all, okay? Because a lot of my tea sippers didn't watch him. But it was a lot of y'all who made this man famous, okay? What do I always tell people, okay? The new currency, especially on social media, it's not money. It's not super chats. And I'm forever grateful and humble for the super chats. The new currency is views likes and engagements. So even when you're watching something that you don't like, you're still giving it energy. You're still giving it a view. You're still, you know what I'm saying, put it, pushing it through the algorithm. And that's the part that's just weird to me that it was so many black women that were tuning into him only to complain. Y'all not about to have me wasting my energy going back and forth and beefing with Kevin Samuels. Well, y'all gonna be over there next week watching his stuff. Y'all got that man to a million subscribers in less than two years because he used y'all and, and, and used things about black women to propel him. And not to mention a lot of the, you know, the so-called fuck boys who followed him and who listened to that. And I'm not saying everybody who followed him was a fuck boy, but a lot of the comments that I've seen were very fuck boyish. OK, now I feel like at the end of the day, people have a right to state what they want to state on the internet, on the real world, right? 
But just understand that whatever you put out there, whatever energy you put out there, be prepared to get that same energy back. And understand that whatever you put out there, you know, good or bad or indifferent, you can't expect everyone to like you in life, just like in death. Another thing that I really hate about this situation with not just Kevin Samuels, but with where I'm seeing the black community on social media. I talked about this during my video about Toby. And I said, our community, black folks, now I don't care if you're African American, Caribbean, or African, black folks on the internet, we are the only community that sits there and drags our own. And I'm not saying other men don't talk about their women. I'm not saying that women of other races don't talk about their men. But see, when they do it, it's behind closed doors. It's kitchen table talk. When we do it, we monetize this shit. Black men ain't shit. They're all thugs. They're all deadbeat dads. Like, comment, kind of subscribe. Black women ain't shit. They're all single mothers. They're, they're, they're trash. They don't never have the same baby daddies. Like, comment, kind of and subscribe. Show me the Asian women. Remember, remember when a woman sent a super chat a few months ago and said, T, you need to let your audience know that they find out that they're pregnant with a black boy, they need to have an abortion. Abort black boys now. I was shocked. And she sent some decent, it was at least a $20 super chat. And I'm thinking to myself, bitch, are you serious? I'm a mother of two boys. Why would I ever perpetuate some stupid shit like that? But see, this is the hate, okay? We are now seeing the seeds of dissension because Kevin Samuels was not the first to do this. He was just, for whatever reason, he went viral and was able to monetize it better. I've been on these internet streets for years. So I've seen it all. I've seen a lot of people come and go. Thank you to everybody who remembers that super chat. And I had to check her. I'm not one of these bitter Bettys on YouTube. I'm not, pe I'm not preaching that doctrine because I refuse to act like all black men are bad or all black women are bad. But for years, we have had these conversations on YouTube and they mainly for the most part stayed in the black sector. Nobody brought them mainstream. Nobody made them famous. The, origina the originator of this type of genre was Sergeant Willie Pete. Who remembers that? from old school YouTube, Sergeant Willie Pete. And I've had conversations with him. I remember me and him talking years ago and he was a pretty cool brother if you actually talked to him because I wanted to kind of know where he was coming from. He ran across my video about the whole light skin, dark skin thing that kind of went viral and me and him had a, have a, had a conversation. So this is nothing new. These conversations have been had on YouTube but for whatever reason, Kevin Samuels was able to do it better. He was able to dress it up. He wasn't behind an avatar. People were able to touch him and look up to him. He became like a mascot, but he was definitely not the first to do it. Now, a lot of things that I find very interesting with the way he lived, because like I said, I didn't watch him. The only thing I knew about Kevin Samuels was these viral videos. So initially I thought, okay, well, he's, he's a relationship guru. You know, they keep pushing him as some dating expert. So I'm assuming he's married and has a happy life. Then I find out he's been divorced twice. He has a child, you know, he has a daughter, you know, but it's like, are all the same things that he was saying about black women, does that apply to his ex-wives? Does that apply to his daughter? You know, that's the part that's very, very disturbing to me is that a lot of this is rhetoric and it's starting to take a toll on the youth. And I'll get into that a little bit later, but it's definitely starting to take a toll on the youth where you see so much divisiveness between black men and black women online. It is sad. The hate, the bitterness. When we posted yesterday, uh, two days ago, excuse me, about Kevin Samuels, this woman was mad again. You have a lot of people who have serious issues and it's, it's really disturbing. And a lot of these issues are coming because of people like Kevin and others who spew certain things. So now you have a lot of women who are upset and they hate everybody. So she came on there 
I'm going to show you what we posted first. Let me share my screen. Give me just a second here. Okay, so this was the post. Um, basically, we said YouTube influencer and lifestyle coach Kevin Samuels passed away this evening. According to friends and family, he was a victim of a cardiac arrest at the age of 57. Samuels was famous slash infamous for challenging women's relationship expectations and also holding men accountable for not striving to be high value men. Rest in peace. Any thoughts? So this is what I posted, uh, the confirmation. Then I posted videos. So check this out. Way possible that this is not true. No, this I, is have, I have family confirmation. That was some lady. I don't know who she was. She was confirming that he was dead. So this is another video. What you heard from me and what I provided the information about me, what do you think that I need to do in order for me to be satisfied in a good relationship? What do you think that I need to do? Or what do I need to change about myself? Um, that's all I Huh? All I how old am I? Oh, I'm... I am 5'4 and I weigh 200 pounds. So I'm thick. It's not thick. That's, that's obese. Okay. I'm 6'4 and you weigh as much as me. That's not thick, it's obese. Um, you want my measurements? I don't care, it's obese. More than 30 in your mind is obese, man. 5'4, 200 pounds is, is, is larger than the average running back. I you kind of get right back? I said marriage is going to work for most people in today's modern world. I don't think so. Why? Because average women do not want average men. Average women want high value men. There is only a small portion of high value men, men who can actually get a larger return on investment from the union of marriage, more than just family legacy, that kind of stuff. That's why you tend to see millionaires and billionaires married. But the, the people in the middle, there used to be a benefit to average men for marrying. Today, there's little to no benefit for an average man to marry because average women don't want them. And if an average woman was to get with an average man, the majority of women would think they're settling. Marriage is going to work, number one, in order to be a high value man, it starts with money. Again, like it or not, I didn't put the six-figure thing out there. It's been with us since the mid-80s. And like it or not, that's where this whole thing starts. You can't be high value and homeless. So you have to make a certain amount of money. And the line is roughly $10,000 a month adjusted for Atlanta dollars. Number two, that money needs to be made over a length of time, i.e. performance. And that's roughly about five years. And about the three-year mark, you're kind of starting to scratch the surface. Why does it need to be five years? Well, because guys, it's a matter of consistency and stability. Look in the NFL, the NBA, anybody can have a great season, but having a great season does not automatically mean you're going to the Hall of Fame. Number three is group acceptance. Like it or not, guys, high value man is like a fraternity. It's like a club, a secret society. And high value men, no other high value men, they're welcoming men to the group. Number one, Okay, let me come back on the screen here. So that is what we posted. And so this girl came and she was like, um, I don't know why you're posting these videos of him. Anyways, you shouldn't be posting because if you die tomorrow, these same black men would be laughing and they wouldn't care if you died. Which to me was a very bitter Betty comment. And I had to come on there and, you know, let her ass know. Um, first and foremost, if I don't give a damn about some of these fuck boys in life, Trust me, when I'm gone, I'm not going to care, okay? Second of all, um, I don't play semantics and I don't play with in emotions. I'm going to show both sides of anybody. And from what I've seen, because I'm not a longtime viewer of his, I wasn't subscribed, I've seen videos where he's held men accountable and women accountable. You can get mad at that, but I'm not going to just make it one-sided to fit your narrative, Okay. I've seen videos where he said that men have to pay all, you know, all the bills in the household. And a lot of guys were mad about that. I've seen videos where he said something about a guy having a small peen and, you know, not really having a job, but he wants, you know, a bad bitch. So we're not going to spin a narrative that he was only addressing women. 
Okay. So that's what she was mad about. She thought I was just supposed to just post videos of him talking about women's weight and the way they looked. Oh, trust me, we got those videos too. But that initial post was to show, you know, both sides. Now, the thing, like I said, I find very interesting is that a lot of women were calling into this man's show from the things I've seen, from the videos I've seen. They were calling into this man's show. And my thing is, how low is your self-esteem that you need validation from a man, one, that you do not personally know, you don't have a relationship with, and he's shown you time and time again how he gets down. You know, if you don't look a certain way, an eight or above, he's going to clown you. If you're five foot three, 200 pounds, you know damn well he's going to clown you. So again, for the women who are calling in, to me, these women are not victims. Y'all are a part of the damn circus, okay? Y'all are clowns in his circus. He used y'all and monetized y'all. And y'all got a lot of black women out here looking desperate and crazy and needing the validation from a Kevin Samuels. Because the women who have themselves together, there's no reason for me to call into his show. For what? I know my worth. I know what I'm out here doing. I know the business that I'm handling. So I don't need to call a stranger to ask them anything about me or how I should get a man. Imagine if you put that same energy into calling into this man's show once a week to get belittled. If you put that same energy into working out, eating right, taking care of yourself, you know what I'm saying? Doing positive affirmations, you'd be in a whole better space. So like I said, I blame a lot of people for this nonsense, not just him. He didn't do this alone. So let me go ahead and just show you guys a few more videos that I ran across here. Give me just a second. Okay, here goes some videos here. How tall are you? Um, about 5'4". Five 5'4". Four. Five four. Dress mm -hmm. size? Dress size, uh, size 10. How much did you weigh the last time you weighed yourself? 180. I actually tell I'm heavy chested. Yes. Like I'm, but, I'm, but, man, but listen. Mm -hmm. 5'4", 180. You weigh more than a man. <laughs> no. I, I, I didn't hear you. Um, I'm just wondering what kind of options would be available to me. I'll give you a quick synopsis. Uh, I'm 42 years old. Uh, last year I used to weigh 203 pounds. None. No, I'm not finished. None. Yeah, you are. Last year. Yeah, you are. Last year, no, I just got into the protective stuff because I like to work out. I started back working out. So I wanted to do something that would be protective for my hair. <laughs> I'm on it. I'm being honest. If you go to my page, you can get my natural hair out. I have hair. Man, you're not like to work out. No, you don't. You yes, like I eat. do. You get my friends over here. They will tell you I just started. Oh, I just got into the protective. Break yourself. Let's go the ones you can't. Okay. And? Yeah, let's get back to reality. No, I'm in reality. No, no, you're not in reality. I'm you're in not reality. You're not in reality. If you're going to be a team, we can end this. Because that's not reality. You're not a supermodel. So what do you, what do you make? You're not, okay, man. Yeah, check your attitude. Check your attitude. Break yourself. Let's go the ones you can't. Who lies more? Men or women? Men. Really? Because you lie more. Is that your hair? No. That's a lie. Who lies more? I, I, I don't know what your topic is tonight, but I just... How old are you? Hmm? How old are you? Yes. Don't play with me. Guess these nuts. Child. Here goes another one. 
Zero on one to ten, can't you seven? Boy, you make your looks. Fresh face out of the shower, you're now keeping. A ten. Your face? Yes. A ten. I'm always gonna give myself a ten. I'm not gonna ever give myself. All right. A 10. So uh there we go, right there, people. It's all you can make you see all the hard people losing. See, uh you can you can cap all you want to, but you're, you're, not, you're not an international superpower. You're not an international, and I'm just trying to ask you. See, up, up until this point, I feel like you've been pretty reasonable. But now, if you want to do that, I think you should by like, end it because I don't, I don't play those games. I'm doing something for a good reason, and I'm trying to be helpful. But man, you and Rihanna walk into the room. Don't nobody confuse you. You're not a ten. You're not a ten. You're not a ten. You're not a ten. But but that's the point. But that's that's a ten. You're not a ten. Okay, so now I want to show you guys um, T.I. and uh, whatchamacallit, Slim Thug are very sad about his passing. Hold on. Okay. There we go. We needed Kevin Samuels, man. We needed somebody to put the pressure on women sometimes and just say the shit that other dudes don't tell them, man. Because women walk around this motherfucker sometimes like, you can't tell them shit, you know what I'm saying? So... He gave a great perspective. If you try to find a top tier nigga, you want a top tier nigga, you can't be out here doing average shit. And you can't be mad at him for what he said. And if and, and, and everybody who mad, everybody called him. So you can't be mad at him at all. It wasn't like you know, he called him. They called him and asked for advice. And he gave it to him how he felt like it was, you know. So I saluted him on that. I enjoyed the uh, see the back and forth, you know what I'm saying? I don't, you know, uh, condone tearing down women or nothing, but I don't think that's necessarily what he was on either, though, you know what I'm saying? I believe that he was just speaking on the point of if you try to get Kevin said it, like it's like a coach, you know what I'm saying? If you want a top tier nigga, you know, this is what most top tier niggas is gonna want, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of women need a reality check if they think that, you know, uh, the shit they be doing is acceptable. A lot of the shit that they be doing don't be acceptable. He just gave a motherfucker a real, I feel like a real outlook on it, you know what I'm saying? About what me and how me and really move and shit. So, you know, I hate the, I hate the, um, hear that this man passed away, man. <laughs> As he smokes his roach. <laughs> Uh, let me see here. I think the T.I. one. Oh, here it is. Tip. Oh, and Joe Budden. <laughs> Lovely Joe. Hey, Pooh. You know, you watching. All right. So this is what T.I. had to say. He said, rest well, big dog. May God be pleased with and accept your service, brother. Speaking your truth on behalf of the unnoticed was truly a thankless task. I'm thankful for the times we've had and the opportunity to celebrate success, exchange philosophy together. Love and respect, King. And somebody drew a picture here where he's saying, y'all are still fat and average. <laughs> Gotta love the internet. Uh, Joe Budden says, it's disgusting what some of y'all do when death occurs. All right. So let me come back on screen, child. Now, this is my thing. Um, Again, I'm not celebrating the death of anybody. Okay. Um, I didn't celebrate his death. I think for the most part, from what I've seen, the average woman just doesn't really care one way or another because of the antics that they saw on social media, the viral clips that were pushed. Um, did I see some people on Twitter celebrating his death and making memes and dancing and, you know, doing, you know, just weirdo shit? Of course, that is the Internet. Once again, like I've said before, the Internet is going to what? Internet. That's what they do. So I definitely saw that. I don't agree with it. I don't believe in, you know, celebrating anybody's death because nobody knows their time or hour. OK, be grateful that you woke up today instead of celebrating somebody else's demise. So I'm not about that energy. OK, so for me, like I said, he's he said a lot and it's definitely a divide in the community. You have a lot of men praising him. You have some men who feel like, no. You know, he was doing too much. He was just very disrespectful. It was not a good look for black men. And then you have some women 
who really stand by him and who really took his advice and thought he was a great teacher and they have a lot of love and respect for him. And then you have other women who just simply detest him. They detest everything about him. Okay. So there's a bunch of different nuances and we're going to get into some more. Let me read a few super chats here. Um, give me just a second. Uh, Lee said 99 99. Thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate you, sis. She says, Hey, my Ninja sis, love you and keep doing what you do. Happy Mother's Day in advance. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for this for the love and the super chat. And we're definitely gonna get into that whole Mother's Day thing. I'm gonna get a little bit esoterical in a bit. So thank you. Um, Amina Jones says, T, did you see the supporters on Facebook threatening to harm black women? This is honestly scary. Mm, I didn't see that, but I've seen a lot of just really nasty comments towards women. And like I said, this divide in our community is getting bad between the women saying abort black boys and some of these black men threatening black women. Like I said, I go through it as a content creator, getting threatened, getting just talked to crazy when I, I'm probably one of the most unbiased people. I try to be fair in my commentary and I still get picked apart and attacked by certain black men on, on online, you know, in the comments and things like that. So it's really unfortunate. It really is. Um, thank you for the super chat, love. Uh, Raven Black says, hey, T, just sending you some love while I'm at work. I watch the playback when I get home. Perfect. Thanks for coming through. Shout out to all 10,000 people viewing. Thank you all for coming through on this good Saturday. Um, Regan Bacon says, hey, T. I'm 23 and I've been watching since I was 13. And to be honest, I burnt my cape a year ago. Okay, well, thank you so much. Thank you for the super chat. Yeah, I don't think anybody needs to have on a cape. I said, I feel like every situation is different. Nobody needs to cape for anybody. At the end of the day, adults need to be able to face whatever circumstances they put themselves in. So thank you. Um, let's see here. Um, Adelaide says, I wasn't feeling him, he should have focused on his health rather than other people's looks, weight, and finances. Wow, thank you so much for the super chat, sis. Appreciate you. Um, Asia Graham says, finally caught a live after five years. Really needed to hear this today. Um, I had my birthday a month ago, lost my aunt who was a tea sipper nine months ago. The dad and I aren't on great terms. Postpartum hit hard. Watching you has helped. Thank you so much, and I'm glad that my videos have helped you. Hope everything starts getting better for you, love. Um, let's see here. 40 Shorty sent $49.99 says, hey, lovely T, thank you for sharing the truth. As always, not once did I watch his videos. It was other black women showing his clips of things that he said. Would have never known who this man was. Was it not, was it not for black women entertainment channels? You are correct. I must check myself. Thank you. And thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. And that's how I feel. If you see my Instagram page, you know, like I said, I only made the one video about him and Umar because it was trending on Twitter, but we didn't post him like that. We didn't post him. I don't think we've ever posted him until now because it's like, why? You know, why post that? If y'all feel so bad about it, why even keep going and giving that person traffic? You know, so some people like abuse because I don't get it. Um, Let's see here. Him and her son, I says the distraction of uh, the black family relationships is intentional and is intentional and profitable. We have to learn how to hold one another accountable while walking in love. We must show compassion to one another by the way you rock. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so glad you said that. We do. And on my channel, y'all know me. I've held black women accountable. I've had black women get mad and say, you know, they were unsubscribing and fuck me because I'm holding Black women, not all, but the ones who are doing whatever, accountable for their actions. You know what I'm saying? Just like I've held Black men accountable for their actions. You know, you can hold people accountable and we can still give them grace to change. I don't think burying your head in the sand or making excuses or ignoring it is a good thing either. I think it's a way to address things and still be respectful. Y'all have heard me say time and time again, as a woman, you have to bring more to the table than just pussy and problems. Put a teacup if you heard me say that. You can't say you want a baller, you want, you know, a rapper, a millionaire, but you're a waitress and you have nothing else going for yourself. 
water seeks its own level. Just like with men, you can't be out here shaped like a fucking wheelbarrow. Your dick is big. You know what I'm saying? Your, your, your stomach is bigger than your damn peen. You ain't seen your peen in three years, but you want a baddie. I keep this, the energy the same for both sexes. If you want better, you got to do better. You can't have expectations for women when you're not even there health wise. You walking around pigeon toed, your thighs rub together, but you want a bad bitch. You want a bitch with a 20 inch waist and a 45 inch ass. But again, you ain't seen your peen in two years. Make it make sense. You, whatever you want out of somebody, you better be damn well willing to work and strive for it yourself. You want a baller? You better make sure as a woman, you're running, you know what I'm saying? You're, you're working. You got a savings account. You're doing what you have to do. You can take care of yourself because then you'll attract that same person. You can't be living, you know what I'm saying, in the projects, working when you want to or on EDD, you know what I mean? You can't do that and then you're demanding somebody with a six-figure income. We got to be realistic. So like I said, I've always had these conversations on my channel, but you can have conversations without being derogatory and going in on people and, and picking them apart. You can just talk in, you know, just context without just being just all the way just out of pocket. And I think that's what people are tired of because at this point, it's embarrassing because these conversations are now global news. These are regular conversations now that you can see on Fox News. There was, he went viral recently on April 29th for saying that women, single women over the age of 35 are leftovers. This is no longer kitchen table talk. This is being picked up by mainstream outlets. And to me, it's just not a good look because if a woman who's single at 35 is still single, she's considered a leftover. What about men who are the same age and who, who are single? Are they leftovers? Are they damaged goods? Are they not good enough? I mean, that's really sad. I've even heard women say, Oh, if a man don't have no kids by the time he's 30, there must be something wrong with him. Why is there something wrong with him? Because he's not out here creating single mother homes. Like the, the mentality that some of us have on social media is so toxic, it's sad. So a man who doesn't have any children by the time he's 30, because he's careful, he uses condoms, he's not trying to be on child support, we'll judge him. But Tyrone, who got 10 baby mamas, okay, and 15 kids, Oh, he's a real man. We know his pain work. We, we got to stop this. It's foolishness. Nobody is damaged goods just because they're over a certain age. With age, you get better. With age, you gain more knowledge. With age, you know what you're willing to accept as a man and a woman and what you're willing to not accept. But this is now public viral conversation. Let me show you this. This is mainstream news now that's talking about his topics. And you're unmarried. But if you're a man to 35 years old and you're unmarried, you are a leftover woman. A leftover woman. You are what is left. Men know that there's something likely wrong with you. Whether you want to hear it or not, I'm going to just go there with you. I'm telling you the truth that you don't want to hear. Men know that there is something likely wrong with you. Here's what's going to happen. If you are a woman, 35 plus, and you want a man that's uh, on the same lifestyle level, you're going to have to share it. Shots have been fired. Social media giant Kevin Samuels is taking national news women over 35 years old. You just heard what he had to say there. And now the women that is a disgrace to me. That kitchen table talk conversations that used to be in the barber shop or in the hair salon are now national news. That black women, because that's who he's referring to. Let's keep it real. In the segment, they have an Asian lady, a Latina woman, but we know who he was referring to during his commentary. So this is now being used to be national fodder. 
where black people are out here looking like a joke. Where's the Mexican man who's saying this about his own people? And where's the, the Latino, the Telemundo outlets who are reporting it? It's okay, I'll wait. They, it's, it's not there. I can't find it. This is sad. This is really sad to me that this is now public fodder. You know, um, I, I just, it, it, it's sad. It's sad. Because you're at a certain age does not make you damaged goods. Okay? Because a man is over the age of 30 and doesn't have children does not make him damaged goods. We have to stop this toxicity. It's not okay. Another thing that went public on We TV, they also had a Kevin Samuels conversation. And in this conversation, he was saying that women, he's advising women to not date after 5 p.m. Now, I remember this going viral on the shade room. We didn't post it, but I do remember this going viral on the shade room. So now this is a conversation on We TV. Let me show y'all this. go out after 5 p.m. with a man, sex should be on the menu. If you want to keep it strictly platonic, date between the hours of 12 and 3. Okay, wait, what? What was just said? First of all, okay, let me get them off the screen here. I don't want copyright. So y'all just heard him. So because I go out to dinner with somebody around 7 o'clock, Someone, I don't know, we're meeting for the first time. I should just automatically sleep with that man. Absolutely not. You know, like, like the advice, it, it, it doesn't make sense. This is what he should have said. This, will, this is what I tell my audience, my tea sippers, okay? You can go out on a date at any time. What you don't do if you're not ready to sleep with somebody is go back to their A, Hotel room, B, their house, C, their homeboy's fucking apartment. If you don't know that person, it's a date. You don't go home with them after the date. But there's absolutely nothing wrong with going to dinner with somebody after a certain time. There's nothing wrong with catching a late night show with somebody. That doesn't mean that you have to sleep with them. That's not on the menu. This is insane to me. It's, it's insane. Like the old saying goes, ain't nothing open past 3 p.m. But legs. I mean, 3 a.m., sorry, not 3 p.m. Think about what he said. Past 3 a.m., but legs. So if you don't want to sleep with somebody, you don't go to their home. You don't go to a hotel. But it's okay to go to dinner with them after a certain time. But there are people literally regurgitating this. And I just find this silly. And, and, and think about it. It even makes men look bad. Just think about that. Are you you mean to tell me that that men nowadays have no self control? That you're like you're just willing to just sleep with somebody because you guys are going to dinner after a certain time? You don't even know that woman's mentality. And I talk about you know what I'm saying soul ties being real. You're willing to create a soul tie with some random woman just because you took her out to eat after 7 p.m. Instead of getting to know her mentality and what she's really about. This is some crazy stuff, y'all. Especially like somebody says, what about STDs? Now, let's talk about this whole high value man. Because people keep saying this, you know, oh, he just preached that people should want a high value man. And there's not enough high value men to go around. Okay. One thing like I've told y'all before when it comes to men with money. I've always said this on my channel. Men with money have options. That's a given. I don't care if it's somebody who is an entrepreneur and his business is doing good. He could be the manager of, Joe, of Bojangles. He could be a rapper or athlete. When men have money and they have fame and prestige, nine times out of 10, you're not gonna be the only one. I've said that from day one. That's why I never understand when females get with rappers and then they start crying three months later that he's cheating on them and he has a side chick. 
That's just what comes with the lifestyle. So either you're going to be down with the lifestyle, you're not. I said this time and time again, okay? But what people also need to understand is that these so-called high-value men who make six figures, a lot of them are not necessarily good people. I don't understand why that conversation is never had. If somebody can treat you like a doll and put you on the shelf when needed and then snatch you off that shelf when they're ready, that doesn't make them a good person. That doesn't make them husband material. Just because they can wine and dine you and take you on trips and all that stuff, that shit gets old quick. It gets old quick. Remember when we were talking about the whole DJ Envy situation? And I said, a lot of times people feel like because somebody has money and they're balling, that, you know, that also equates good sex. And what did I say? A lot of times you'll see these women or these wives who are in these high value relationships fucking the pool boy. Put a teacup if y'all remember me saying that two weeks ago. Because the mentality is for some people, I have money, so I don't have to put in work to make you feel good. I don't have to make you, you know what I'm saying, orgasm. I don't have to do any of that because it's about me and whatever you're not willing to do for me sexually, there's 10 other chicks behind you who are willing to do that. So I think we have a misconstrued that these so-called six-figure high-value men are somehow wonderful men with great character. And sometimes when people find themselves in that relationship, they see that it's not all that it's cracked up to be. Now, for some women, they're cool with that. They're cool with not really being loved and, and, and you know, treated well and, you know, having a, oh, that's fine. That's your, that's your cup of tea. But that's why a lot of them end up creeping with the pool boy or the chef in the house because they're not getting that loving. They're not getting that companionship from that man because he's busy, you know what I'm saying, living vicariously through his money, wealth, and prestige. So we need to get that mentality, this whole high value equals money. It doesn't. What about the men who send super chats Every time I go live and they're like, man, T, you really get me through my work day. I'm over here working in the warehouse. Thank you so much for these live videos. And I thank them like, man, that means a lot. What about those men who are working hard to provide for their families, who are working 40 hours a week, busting their ass, you know what I'm saying, doing blue collar work, doing plumbing work. So those men are not high value because they're not making 60 you know what I'm saying, $60 million a year or just whatever crazy amount. Those men are not high value because they're not walking around in three-piece double-breasted suits because they have on, you know what I'm saying, oil stains from being mechanics. We have to reevaluate our thinking. It's sad. And the same for men who put women on pedestals, Instagram models like a Ari Fletcher. She's put on a pedestal, but her behavior is ratchet and gutter as hell. The other day she was in the club with her son, a three-year-old. Let me show y'all this video real quick because this went viral. But these are the women that are being put on pedestals for young boys and for young girls to look at. She's considered somebody worthy because she has a big Instagram following and a big ass. I'm going to mute the music. This is her son in the club while she's twerking her ass. But because she's famous and she dates rappers, some guys will consider her a prize to get with as opposed to the young girl who's in college, who's striving to do something with her life, who's not out here in the club with her three-year-old son dropping it like it's hot. So we need to reevaluate where our priorities lie and how we see people. Social media has a lot of people's minds screwed up. It really does. And it's very easy to sit on your high horse once you start getting YouTube money. Cause let's keep it real. This is where a lot of this arrogance and this attitude of y'all need to do better. Y'all need to do this. Y'all need to do that is because you're getting a bag from YouTube. Let's keep it real. It's very easy to be a high value man 
when all you're doing is commentary and you're bringing in 50 grand a month from YouTube. It's very easy to get braggadocious. It's very easy to be that bitch, that bad bitch, when you're getting money from Instagram, when you're getting sponsorships. Ari calls y'all broke all the time. And people stay following her. They stay standing after her. It's very easy for her to get arrogant coming from the damn streets of Chicago now that you're making money because of social media. People forget where they come from. They will talk down to nine to five workers as if now they're better than them. How many times have, have y'all heard me thank people for sending super chats? I've never asked for a super chat, but the fact that people send them, that's humbling. Why? Because that's money that somebody worked a nine to five for. So who am I to then turn around and look down on a man working a nine to five or look down on a woman working a nine to five and say, well, I'm that bitch now because I'm an influencer. But y'all don't hear me. These are the people that y'all follow and that y'all praise. People who talk down to y'all and make y'all feel like shit. But the people who uplift y'all, who give y'all good advice, y'all don't, y'all don't promote us. Y'all don't share our videos. Y'all don't make us go viral. So like I said, this whole Kevin Samuels thing, I blame a lot of y'all. If, if a lot of y'all are in y'all's feelings right now behind it, well, y'all made him famous. Not a lot of people in this chat, but y'all know who I'm talking about. Y'all made him famous. Y'all gave him that energy. Just like with Ari. Ari cusses y'all out all the time. But y'all stay following her, y'all stay praising her, y'all stay jocking her. But the young girl who's in college and who's doing what she's trying, you know, just trying to handle her business and make it through life, y'all not even promoting her little side business. She got a little boutique. Y'all won't post her shit, but y'all will post Ari every day. Y'all won't, you know, go under her post and congratulate her and tell her, you know what I'm saying, keep up the good work, sister. But y'all would sit there and promote and praise a woman who calls y'all broke all the time and tells y'all y'all not shit. I'm just saying. High value does not equal money. High value is morals. High value is integrity. High value is how you treat people when no one is watching. Not just on camera. Not just when you have the public in front of you. How do you treat folks when nobody's watching? How do you treat people behind the scenes? That's high value. What's in your heart? How do you talk to people? And I'm sorry if I'm yelling, if I'm preaching right now, but I'm, I'm, just, I'm, just, fab I'm just flabbergasted by where we're at with this whole situation. It is insane. How long have I been out here? Oh my God, 47 minutes. It is, it's, 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 it's insane to me that this is where we're at on social media. Let me read some more super chats here, y'all. Um, let's see here. Breezy said, you better preach T. Kevin knew the game and people fell for it. Absolutely. Thank you for the super chat, love. Um, Pierre says, go off, T. I appreciate your views as always. Thank you so much, Pierre. I appreciate you for coming through. Um, let's see here. Latino Boy sent 20 says, funny, slim thug, T.I. and Joe Budden are all dusties who have a horrible track record of relationships um, to praise a man who's twice divorced and died alone after being with the overnight escort. Mm. We're going to get on that in a minute. Thank you for the uh, super chat, love. Appreciate you. Donna Dash says, Kevin was supporting inappropriate touching of children. He told mothers to not believe their children when they say they were done wrong. Wow. Ooh. Thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate you, love. Um, I think it's Yvette Felice says, TT, love you, girl. You have no idea how much your videos meant to me and carries me through months of hospitalizations. Forever grateful. Thank you so much, and I hope you get better. Thank you for coming through today, sis. Uh, Joanne says, hey, T, looking lovely. Thank you for all your deep dives and for coming through with these lives. Happy Mama's Day. Hit the like button, y'all. Yes, please hit the like button. Thank you so much, sis. We got over 12,000 people in here. Thank y'all for joining me today. My good sis, Marquis. What's up, sis? She sent five. She says to harm me if you want to, this black woman is a shooter. Hey, sis. Love you. Love you too, sis. Thank you. 
Um, old soul says happy Mother's Day, T. Thank you so much, sis. Same to you. Um, Megan Frederick says, Hey T, driving to Miami. Hopefully this gets me there. LOL. My mom oh just disappeared. I have a lot of chats coming through. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, hold on. Oh, I don't know. It's like it just disappeared. I'm sorry. Maybe I can find it again. Okay, let me. Oh, wow. $100. Lee wins. Thank you so much for the super chat. He says, negative is like sex. It sells. The man held both parties accountable. The sad part is the comments about black women is what stuck out the most. Thank you for the time you take out of your life to give us the tea, lovely tea. Thank you so much. And thank you for the super chat. I really appreciate it. Thank y'all for coming through, man. Y'all are showing so much love. Um, Let's see here. Goth Boy says, ain't trying to throw my own sister under the bus, but I feel like Kevin's toxicity is the reason she felt pressured to have a baby before 30 years old. Wow. Wow. That's, that's sad. You know, people are letting folks on the internet literally influence their real day-to-day -day life. I mean, if it's something that can really help you, of course, you know, take the good advice. But if it's something that's putting you in a situation to bring a child into the world, this is a human being. And if you're not ready for that child, please do not do this because somebody's telling you that if you don't have a child by the time you're 30, you're not shit. And this goes for men and women. This is sad, you know, but we're not going to, you know, put your sister on blast, goth boy. Thank you so much. Uh, Sierra Garcia says, hey, T, been watching you for years, wishing you a happy Mother's Day. Thank you so much. Love you. Thank you for coming through. Um, Black Batman says, T, you're 100% right. I'm a 31-year-old single, I guess, woman. Uh, I don't have kids, but I get, oh, a man. Okay, Black Batman, I'm sorry. You didn't write if you were a man or a woman. Okay, I'm a 31-year-old single man. I don't have no kids, and I get judged all the time. Thank you for speaking the truth. You are so welcome. And the reason why I can speak on that is because one of my really good friends, he's like, I don't know, like maybe 37 now, he has no kids. And he says like women judge him. Like, why don't you have no kids? What's wrong with you? He's like, why? Because I don't have a trail of baby mamas behind me. Like that is such a warped mentality. He's a good man. He works hard. He was in the army for years. So he wasn't out here trying to just have a bunch of kids willy nilly. You know, so I'm glad that other men can understand that because I just find that insane, you know? Um, let's see here. Ronisha says, if you don't want to sleep with somebody, then don't sleep with them. Exactly. Thank you, Ronisha. Uh, Latasia says, KS had a great message for both Black men and Black women. However, his delivery was awful and downgrading when it came to Black women. Yeah. And that's why I wanted to show both sides. You know, I'm not going to spin a narrative that he's never held Black men accountable, that he's never given any type of decent advice, because from some of the stuff I've seen, it's some of the things I've said. But yes, his delivery, especially when it came to Black women calling in, was very disturbing. And it came off, you know, like I get it, jokes and things like that, but some of it was really hateful, you know, and that's the part that I just, I couldn't get into, you know, so to each his own, but I can't sit and just watch somebody just constantly talk down to people who look like me, okay? That's just me keeping it real. Um, Let me see here. Jay Jermaine, hey bro, thanks for coming through. He says, this brother supports you. I've been a follower since 2012 when you used to have your news channel. You've always been fair and balanced, peace. Thank you so much. Yes, you are definitely an OG tea sipper and thank you for coming through. Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate you guys. Um, I think it's Zalaphonian says, guess we women need shy rock. Hold on, I need to shy rock these niggas. Oh gosh, y'all are wild. Thank you for the super chat, sis. Um, Lime Mai says, what I don't understand is they say it's mandatory for women to have sex on the date and want to split the bill. If she doesn't, but I thought we'd be considered easy and unladylike. Boom. Thank you. And that's my issue. It's, it's too many contradictions. Because again, if I go out to dinner with somebody after 5 p.m. and I sleep with them on the first night, I don't know this man from a hole in the wall. I, I'm a whore. I'm all types of sluts. I'm easy. But then if I don't, you know what I'm saying, 
I'm leading him on. If I feel like, well, you know, you should pay the bill. Oh, I'm selfish. I thought you were a strong, independent woman. It, again, a lot of people use these talking points because it's clicks and views. YouTube is a money making algorithm driven machine. So the crazier I talk, the more controversial I can be, the more views I have. And y'all got to understand too with Kevin Samuels, he's an older man. Once you get to a certain age, you don't give a damn how people see you. He's 56. You just don't care. When you're younger, that's when you care. Like, oh my God, I don't want my friends to judge me, my school, my job. Once you get to a certain age, you don't care. So he had no filter. He didn't care what came out his mouth. He could say one, one thing one minute and then be contradictory the next. Because at that point, he's set in his ways. He's an older gentleman. He doesn't care. Whereas if this was somebody in their you know, mid to late 20s, they might walk on eggshells. They might think about it twice because this could come back to haunt them 10 years from now. You're doing all this preaching about Dusty's and not getting pregnant. Then we fast forward five years from now, you're pregnant by a Dusty and you're a single mother. Well, what happened to all this, you know, black women don't talk to Dusty's, you know? So again, you got, you got to watch the things that you're saying. But I think he was saying a lot of the stuff he was saying because he was older and he did not give a damn. At that point, he was set in his ways and it didn't matter. Okay. So let me go ahead here. Um, I want to get to the next part. I've been on for an hour. This might be a longer stream, but um, I don't have an AAU game until about six. So I have some time. Let's see here. I'm talking like I might be the one playing in this. I'm going to go watch my son's AAU game. Not that I'm going to be playing in it. So now this is, I, I was really sick yesterday. I was not feeling good early in the day. So I had posted this yesterday. This was an update about what happened to Kevin Samuels. And y'all know me, I'm very spiritually sensitive. And as I was reading the update about what happened to him, I started feeling even sicker. Like I started like having a lot of pain and I just was not really feeling good. And I started getting these weird, like, not visions. I don't even know what to call them. But I kept getting these, the, the color purple vibes, color purple vibes. And I'm going to show you all how weird this whole situation is. So this is what I posted yesterday. Um, we were doing an update about his death. So I said, Kevin Samuels, a YouTuber who became known for his controversial relationship advice, has died. His mother confirmed to NBC News. Rumors of his death first circulated on social media Thursday night. His mother, Beverly Samuels Birch, declined to release details about what happened. She says she learned from her son's death via social media. Then she goes on to say that was a terrible thing for social media to put out. I didn't even know. I hadn't even been notified. She said in a phone call on Friday, all I'm doing is requesting that people pray for us. So then... Uh, that goes on to say the Atlanta police department said officers were called to an apartment on East Paces Ferry Road, Northeast on Thursday morning regarding a person injured. By the time the police arrived, first responders were performing CPR on an unresponsive man later identified as Samuels. A woman in the apartment told officers that Samuels had complained about chest pains and that she attempted to help him, but he fell. The police report states the woman called 911. He was taken to Piedmont Hospital. The police said when contacted Friday, the Fulton County Medical Examiner's Office said he could not confirm or deny the information. Then we said, rest in peace. Um, this person here, Philip, says this. A woman met uh, Samuels and spent the night with him. She ID'd him as Kevin Samuels. Samuels complained of a chest pain, fell on top of her, and she called 911. The officials performed CPR. He was unresponsive. OK, then this was the report. So this is what I wrote. My comment was up here. I don't know where the hell it disappeared to. Let me see if I can find it again. OK, so this is what I wrote yesterday. I said him dying on top of a woman just that he just met the night before is creepy. It's giving me color purple vibes. Does anyone know who this mysterious woman woman that he randomly brought home? I find it interesting that people in my live stream said he had clowned a young black girl named Lauren Smith Fields who went home with a random white man that she met on a dating app. She was found dead in his home. Now, three months later, Kevin did the same thing. He brought home a random woman and he died in his home. 
maybe I'm looking too esoterically into this. So, so many people have replied back. And um, I, I didn't see the video. I wasn't sent the video. I don't even know where to look for the video where he talked about Lauren Smithfield. But somebody else had wrote in here. I'm trying to find the comment here. There's so many comments. But basically, she was saying that he had used the word, the color purpling of the black community. I never knew this until this girl wrote it on here. And you can see my comment. I replied back to her. I said, where'd my comment go? I'm sorry. All of this was like in order. Then it like disappeared. But it, I was writing back. Oh, here it is. I said, wow, he used those exact words, the color purpling of black women. Wow, hi, ironic. I don't watch him, so y'all are teaching me new things. So let me come back on the screen. So the young lady ended up sending me the video of him talking about the color purpling. And like I said, I had no idea that this existed. On top of that, other people, if you guys remember, who remembers when I did that stream about Toby, the white girl who had killed the Nigerian guy, Toby, remember somebody sent a super chat and they were saying they find it very funny that Kevin Samuels and the other, I guess, black men on YouTube were quiet about this situation. And I was like, well, I don't know. I don't watch him. And then they said that he, along with so many others, were clowning Lauren Smith Fields. So that's so when I heard about him dying in the way that he did, it kind of like made like my stomach hurt like hold up what didn't that young lady die that way that they were telling me that he talked about like i said i don't know the video i don't watch them this is what people were saying during my stream a few weeks ago and somebody else confirmed it in that um post on my instagram so let me show y'all something and this is why i say all the time energy and words have power they do. I know sometimes people clown me for being too esoteric and looking at stuff too deep, but it just does, you know, and we have to watch the type of energy that we put out there. Um, first, let me play this video of him talking about beauty standards, because I want to kind of put everything into context. So let me um, share my screen. Give me just a second here. <laughs> fallacy beauty is not subjective that's, no, why, we, that's subjective. why we have the that's why we have the golden ratio the Fibonacci right. equation right. you can look at that's facial right. symmetry and see that that's right beautiful people you can map you can map their facial structure and it, it goes to a mathematical calculation oh yeah beauty is universal and the yep. thing is we're talking about black women they are on the opposite end of the spectrum on all ranks okay so he just said that about black women and black women's looks that, you know, our standard is, you know, not up to par for other races of women. OK, so let me go ahead and show you guys where he was talking about the color purpling of the black community. And from what I've seen, this video came out, I want to say. Maybe a month or two ago. From the young girl who sent it to me. Um, her name is Lena. So she sent me some of this info because like I said, I don't watch them. I don't know where to find it. But something in my spirit just kept feeling, you know, color purple, color purple. And so then to find out that he was using the word the color purpling of the black community is insane. But let me let me show y'all this video. It's kind of like a little montage I put together. Okay. So this is a young girl. Me and her were just having a conversation in my DM. So she was just kind of reiterating. The color purpling of the black community. So now I'm going to show y'all where he's talking about it. I call it the, the color purpling of the black community. How many times do we hear that women out here dealing with all this abuse, abuse, abuse? I'm going to do the show on abuse next week because I'm tired of hearing this bullcrap. I, sorry, I do not see women being abused. I, I don't see women, I don't see black women being physically abused. Never really have. 
I'm gonna just say it. I never really have seen black women be in my entire life. I have known of one woman, and that was one of my mother's friends back in the seventies. One, and she and her husband, she and her man, they would fight each other. One, emotional abuse. I, I will tell you, the emotional abuse comes from women to men. Not men to women. So then somebody wrote this. They Hold on, let me go back. So this person wrote, your man died in a rental apartment, unmarried in the arms of a woman he met the night before. I mean, it writes itself. So this was one of the viral Twitter tweets. This is the woman that he was with. Her name is Hortensia Alcantara. Okay. And supposedly she's a nurse. According to the police report, a nurse called 911 to report a person injured on Thursday morning. They arrived to the residence in Buckhead Atlanta apartments to find an unresponsive man later identified as Samuels. Okay. So now here go some more pictures of her. Beautiful girl. She was 32 years old. Another thing I want to point out, a lot of people said in his streams, he drunk a lot of Red Bull. OK, and even watching some of the clips that I was sent, I would see him sipping on Red Bull and a lot of guys mix things like Red Bull and Viagra. He's 56 and he's smashing a spicy Latina, honey. Maybe he also used Viagra and that kind of, you know, could have did something with his heart if he had been drinking Red Bull in the way that he was consuming it. OK. Let me see here. I call it the, the color purpling of the black community. Let me play that for y'all one more time. This is the color purple movie. Again, you have to watch your words and the energy that you put out there. I call it the, the color purpling of the black community. Mm. If that's not words manifesting, if that's not energy manifesting, I don't know what else to tell y'all. Like I said, I didn't know any of this and I felt it in my spirit. And this young girl ended up sending me that clip. I never knew he was talking about the color purple and of America and all this other stuff, okay? So don't you guys find a lot of, let's, there's a lot of esoteric things I can take away from this whole Kevin Samuels situation. He talked about the color purpling of America, okay? He talked to black women on that show the same way Mista talked to Whoopi Goldberg's character. Remember, she was ugly, she was black, you know, uh, she wasn't allowed to smile because she had big teeth. Uh, the daddy told uh, when he went to go buy her, you know, from the daddy, he initially wanted the sister, Nettie. But the daddy was like, oh, no, he wanted Nettie for himself. You can take Seely because she doesn't spoil twice. The same way he talks about women having children as if, you know, it's just a horrible thing. So there's a lot of parallels to this guy, Mr. And Kevin Samuels. Now, another thing I find very interesting that it's not lost on me. That he lost his life during Cinco de Mayo a holiday with a Mexican, they say a nurse. To me, I don't get nurse vibes. I'm not saying you can't be a sexy nurse, but I get escort vibes from her. Nothing about her social media screams are in. I didn't see not one scrub. I saw a lot of sexy pictures. I saw titties out, ass out. I didn't see not one scrub. I didn't see a pair of Crocs. I didn't see her posting about, damn, I've been on my feet 16 hours and my back hurts. See, I got friends who are RNs and LPNs and, you know what I'm saying, CNAs. Her post don't scream, I'm a nurse. Her post screams, for a good time, call 1-800, you know what I'm saying, spicy mamacita. So I find it very interesting that on Cinco de Mayo, he got with a spicy Latina. And she was probably putting it on him. 
And he ended up what? Color purpling by dying on top of her the same way Mr. died on top of his new young wife. Remember, he, he, he traded in ceiling, got a whole nother wife. And died on top of that young lady. And also another thing that people are not looking at esoterically. This weekend is Mother's Day weekend. Tomorrow is Mother's Day. This man spent years going in on women, motherhood, children. If you have kids, you're leftovers. If you're over the age of 35, you're a leftover. And the irony of him dying Mother's Day weekend in the arms of a spicy Latina on Cinco de Mayo after talking about the color purpling of Black America dying on top of her the same way Mr. died on top of his young thing. I'm just saying. And this is no disrespect to this man because at the end of the day, we're all humans. Ain't nobody perfect, myself included. I tell y'all that all the time. That's why I give advice so that way young girls and young boys are not destined to repeat my mistakes. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not, I'm not up here on no pedestal preaching like I'm that girl and none of that shit. You know what I mean? I can barely pronounce some words. Y'all know I ain't perfect. Some shit I can't even pronounce properly. But what I'm saying is that looking at this from an esoterical and a spiritual point of view, there's a lot that we can take away from this. And I think as Black people, and I don't care what part of diaspora you come from, we have to do better. We have to start treating each other better. We can hold each other accountable, right? Because I do that all the time on my channel. And not only do I hold black people accountable, I also hold white people accountable, Asian people accountable. We got to hold everybody accountable as human beings. But we also have to allow, you know, people grace to change and, and fix their ways. And we also have to stop painting each other with all one brush. Everybody who comes into single motherhood doesn't necessarily, doesn't necessarily come into single motherhood because they were out here just, you know, hopping on dick to dick to dick and getting pregnant and having keeping nigga babies. That's not everybody's story. Some of us were actually married and went through divorces. And that's how we became single mothers. And I'm not going to let that define me or make me feel like I'm a bad person or like I'm, I'm, I'm worth less than because nobody does that to men who are divorced. Nobody says that a man is a tainted single father or a tainted divorcee. So again, you have to know your worth. You can't let influencers. And I don't care if it's Kevin or if it's these females who sit online and bash black men all day. You can't let influencers, people that you don't know personally, make you feel bad about what God created. Because at the end of the day, that's the only person I have to answer to. I don't have to answer to strangers on the internet. Okay? Thank y'all so much for the love. Like, wow, we got like 13,000 people watching. I'm just blown away. Um, let me read a few more super chats here. Uh, Kiel He sent 20 says, Kevin was intellectually dishonest and said nothing innovative. I agree. It's sad that he was considered wise and inspirational. Moral standards need to be higher. He was not a martyr. Mm, thank you so much. Yeah, we, we have to, we have to raise our level of standards of who we put on pedestals. You know, we, we have to. So I definitely agree with that. Um, Wayne Washington says, BWS YouTubers and YouTube channels telling women to mistreat, abort black boys, black boy babies, and women say nothing. Um, Wayne, did you just get here, sir? Because if you watch my stream, you might have just got here, so I'm not trying to be disrespectful. But I have caught this out. And I also caught it out in my stream. A woman sent me a super chat trying to get me to encourage other black women to abort black babies. And she got checked in my live stream. You're not going to send me that as a mother of not one, but two boys and think I'm going to co-sign that. I have two brothers and I also have a father. And I find that mentality disgusting. 
if we start aborting all the boy babies, who's going to be there to procreate with your daughters? Can't procreate by yourself. That's what's going on now in other countries. Remember, in China, the one child policy, people were throwing away baby girls in the 80s. Oh, it's a daughter, a border, throw away, throw in the river. Now, 20 years later, all these Chinese and Indian men, they can't find wives. So now some of them are having to turn to each other, which is against their cultural, you know, their cultural beliefs, you know, homosexuality, whatever. That's not part of their cultural beliefs. Or they're having to find wives from other countries, mail order brides, and that's if they have money. Now, imagine if you're a poor Indian in the slum, what you going to do? So we have to be careful pushing that stupid narrative of aborting a certain gender. Because we see what's happening in Asia and in India 20 years later. So no, Wayne, I don't stand with that. Okay? I'm not that typical black female YouTuber. I speak truth over here. And I hold everybody accountable for bullshit. But thank you for the super chat, sir. Appreciate you. Um, let's see here. Cute and anonymous. She sent four ninety nine. She says saying someone should give it up after five p.m. promotes our culture. I also forgot to say in my last comment that the lady he was with was over the age of thirty. Yeah, she was thirty two years old. So again, and she was thick. Them titties was right, and you know I know I got a big chest, so I probably shouldn't be talking. But I'm just saying she was thick. She wasn't no, you know, she didn't look like she was 115 pounds. So I find that very interesting that the same women that he would clown when they called in about their weight and, you know, stuff like that, all of a sudden it's okay when it's on a Latina. Now she's not overweight. Them thighs was rubbing together from what I saw. Some thick thighs. But that's who he ended up, you know, passing away in the arms of. It's sad. And she was, you know, seasoned. Wasn't like she was 23. She was 32 and an escort who played nurse. Um, let me see here. Amanda sent 999 says, I had to ask, hold on. I had a guy ask me out and tell me I had to wait after eight. When I asked what, was it for religious reasons? He said, no, that's when he eats. Um, no. Hmm. Thank you for the super chat. Yeah, a lot of the things that are playing out on the internet are playing out in the real world now. A lot of these talking points are being taken into the real world. And that's the part that's scary. Um, Honey Peace says, I needed this live. I've been going through it lately when it comes to dating and even having a man tell me no man believed in me because I don't have kids. Wow. That's crazy. It's like people will find anything to bring people down. You know, I think wherever you at, wherever you're at, excuse me, on the spectrum of children, regardless if you have children or don't have children, you always have to look at the silver lining in each situation. Okay, maybe you're 30 and you don't have any kids yet. Look at that as, you know, your own blessing. You don't have to answer anybody. There's nobody outside your room every damn five minutes talking about mom, 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 mom. I was like, yeah, what? You know what I mean? So look at it that way. You're free to travel. You know, you can be a little bit selfish and splurge on yourself. You don't have to think about anybody else for now. And for the people who have kids, who had kids young, who are parents, that's a blessing. Like, I love the fact I've been able to raise my boys and, and see them grow up as young men and see where they're at. Like, that, I don't know what I would do without my boys. You know what I'm saying? So you got to look at whatever your situation is in life, look at that as a blessing for where you're at currently. And if you want to have children, eventually, you know what I'm saying, you'll be blessed to, you know, eventually have kids. But have it on your own terms when you're ready. Not because you feel like your biological clock is ticking or you feel like you'll be too old, you know. And I'm not saying wait till you're like 45 or no shit like that, because by that time, that's, you know, that is a bit late. But do it when you know that you're ready, you're with the right person. You know, you guys want to have a child together. That person's going to be with you, preferably marry you. But don't allow influencers and people just, you know, regurgitating talking points 
to have you change the trajectory of your life. Children are a big responsibility. They're, they're living, breathing, you know, human beings. They're not toys. So make sure you're ready, you know? And if you're young and you weren't ready and it was unexpected, then at that point you had to do everything in your power to be a good parent. Get around other positive parents. Get around older people. Ask for advice. There's no perfect parents, but you have to, you know, go out there and seek the advice. You want to consciously want to do better and raise your kids better than how you were even raised. So thank you for the super chat. Let's see here. Uh, Static Shock Nini says, fresh and fit went viral saying men don't have to please women, but women have to please men. Oh, wow. I didn't even know that. There are another ones I don't watch. They give me the same type of vibes. Um, yeah, that's interesting. You know, again, just say whatever, say the most controversial stuff and that's what goes viral, you know, and, you know, bless those women who are willing to put up with that. I'm not, not going to get yours. And I'm just, you know, over here twiddling my thumbs. Absolutely not. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat. Love. Uh, Lorena says that's similar to DJ Khaled. Once he doesn't go down on his wife, he believes he's given her the lifestyle that she has and he doesn't have to. Yeah, DJ Cal is another one. Like Nicki Minaj said, ain't no fat nigga tell me what he not eating, okay? He's thinking that he don't have to do anything to please his wife because she's living a fabulous lifestyle. Well, from what I see, the wife spends a lot of time with the trainer, okay? We all know how that ended with Cassie, Diddy, and their trainer. I'm just saying. So... You never know. Um, let's see here. Love Kia says, I ran out of characters in my last super chat. I was wondering what are your thoughts on the Roe versus Wade situation? Um, we're not gonna talk about that right now. We're talking about Kevin Samuels, but thank you so much for the super chat. Appreciate you. Um, let's see here. Cl clinical chemist says, T, this isn't even the worst of it. He also preached on how husbands should practice domestic discipline and how women should not believe kids if they if they accuse their man of sexual abuse wow again saying anything for a moment that's going to generate kick clicks and views and emotional reactions on the internet there's no such thing as domestic discipline um the only domestic situations that i recognize is domestic abuse and domestic violence like, why are we disciplining each other as adults? If I can't turn around and put hands on my husband, why would I want him to think that it's okay for him to put hands on me? That's very strange. I don't know, child. I hope people are not practicing that. Thank you for the super chat, love. Um, Let's see here. Mr. GC15. Hey, sir. He sent $10. He says, facts, T. You just confirmed what Kevin Samuel said, that average women are not seeking average men anymore, but high value men, which is only limited to a percentage of them. They feel being with an average man is settling. Yeah, but I didn't need to confirm what Kevin Samuels is saying. I've been saying that on my channel for years. You've been, Mr. GC, you've been here for a long time now. I've been saying that. You know what I'm saying? I don't care. As human beings, you want to know that the person that you're with brings something to the table besides sex, besides pussy and problems, besides peen and problems. Sex only gets you so far. That honeymoon phase ends pretty quickly after a few months to a year. So then what's next? What are we building? What, what legacy are we trying to leave? What are we trying to do for each other? So yeah, no, it's the truth. Water seeks its own level. So again, you can't be in, in a, 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 a puddle of muddy water, but now you want the bright, shining blue, sparkling oceans of Dubai. It doesn't work that way. You know what I'm saying? Either you get yourself out that muddy water, you better yourself, get yourself to a place, you know, where you're financially secure, you're handling your business, you're fit, you're looking good for both men and women, okay? And then you can seek people at your own level. But if you're not doing anything in life, you can't be the local weed boy. You've been selling weed since we was in high school. No, I don't want to date you. Not on shit. You've been doing that since 10th grade. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? At that point, you had the right to reserve and say, no, I don't want to be with that person. And same for men. Like, I'm not interested in dating you. 
live in the projects. You got six kids by six different dudes. I don't want that headache. People have the right to make, you know, sound decisions on what they want to do with their life. But you don't have the right to sit there and paint a whole group of women or men with one brush. That's what I don't agree with. And sometimes, you know, everybody's not where they need to be in life, and that's okay. Sometimes people need to build each other up. And then that's where you have to be willing to decide, do you want to help build this person up? And then also understand your ego, keeping your ego in check in the event that it doesn't work out, but you've helped build this person up in the case of Kim Kardashian and Kanye West. So a lot of nuances go into relationships and go into, you know, seeking a partner. But a lot of the things that I'm seeing and I'm hearing on social media is just very, very toxic in my personal opinion. But thank you for the super chat, love. Um, LN says, I never watched Kevin Samuels because he was never my cup of tea. His content was divisive, non-factual, and made black people look crazy. Credentials matter before calling yourself an expert. And he had none. Wow. I had, see, I didn't know if he, you know, had a degree in this, if he was some marriage counselor. I don't know his backstory, but I'm hearing people saying he didn't even have credentials. But then you see like the mainstream media calling him a relationship expert. And I don't know if he had a dating service. I, I don't know. I, I'm not even sure where he came from. I just started seeing clips of him on the shade room. So it's very interesting. Um, let's see here. Zenful Kitoria says, high value partners are the ones who make great life companions and share same values and interests. Exactly. It's not always about six figures. You know, it has to be more than that. So thank you for the super chat. Mahogany Brown says another point when women struggles by herself and she makes it through that struggle, she doesn't want a man who's struggling or lives paycheck to paycheck. That also doesn't mean needing a six figure plus man either. Exactly. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's only, it seems like black women are only shamed for saying that. Other races of women can be like, okay, well, I'm self-made. I make a hundred grand a year. You know, I'm doing my thing. No, I'm not going to date, you know what I'm saying? Asian James, who's a fry cook. He's not on my level. Nobody would knock an Asian woman for saying that. But the second a black woman's like, well, no, I don't necessarily need a guy who makes six figures. But I'm also, you know, if I'm making 100 grand a year, I would like for him to make at least 75. Oh, you're a gold digger. So it's like we can't win for lose. I, I don't know. It's insane, like how it is on social media. And I don't think that makes you a gold digger because, again, if a man is making money and he's handling his business, he's in the gym, body's on point, he's handsome, I don't expect him to go date Rasputia. Not if he's, you know, a man who's, you know, got a six pack, has a nice job, driving a Lamborghini, handling his business. I don't expect to see Rasputia in the passenger side. I just don't. So why is that bad when a, when a black woman says, I'm doing this, I'm handling my business, but she should have a, you know, a Tyrone, you know what I'm saying, from the projects in her passenger side. It, it doesn't make any sense. The hypocrisy is funny. So thank you for the super chat. Um, it's Harley sent 50 bucks. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Says, love you, T. Love you, too. Thank you. Um, Jesse says, personally, this high value stuff needs to stop. We need to just find a good person in general. Money isn't everything. Thank you so much. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, DIY Arts says, the algorithm pushing trash forward to minorities to follow and keep them down. You don't see this in white channels and in music, exactly. Remember a long time ago, who remembers when I was talking about um, the kids who were destroying stuff on TikTok? Remember right before I had surgery in December and I was saying, this is deliberate. This is being done by China. And that white dude, Adam Schultz, literally took my whole talking point, but whatever. And I was saying, isn't it interesting that on American social media, our algorithm on TikTok pushes slapping a teacher, slapping a cop, destroying your school bathroom, doing the most nefarious things. That's what's being pushed to our children, these horrible challenges. But on Chinese TikTok, one, their apps shut off automatically after a certain time from what I've heard. But on their TikToks, 
Everything that's pushed to them is mathematic, ma mathematics, science, coding, things that they can use in life. Thank you. I see the teacups. Y'all remember me doing a whole podcast about that. A lot of this stuff is, tr is strategic and it's meant to hold black folks down. Our children are being fed to slap a teacher and to destroy the school bathroom and risk getting a felony because a lot of those kids who did that end up getting felony destruction of property charges. Meanwhile, the people who run TikTok in their country, all their kids are told, hey, what's the math equation to this? Uh, here goes some coding advice. You know what I mean? They're being sent stuff through their algorithm to help better them in life and make them valuable citizens. Our kids are being taught to be Instagram, you know what I'm saying, thoughts and high value men to try and get rich by any means possible so that we can get an Instagram baddie. It's crazy, but yeah, I definitely agree with you. You don't see this being promoted in other cultures. Like I said, this was on WeTV. This is on Fox News. Even if a white man had a channel disrespecting white women, you think they would cover it? Matter of fact, let me see if I can find this. If I can find where Pierce Morgan went off. I remember Tim Four Rican has sent me this a while ago. Where P Pierce Morgan went off when some man was disrespecting British women. Let me see if I can find this. And I'm no big fan of Pierce Morgan, but the fact that he didn't play when it came to British women being disrespected, I respected it. Um, let's see here. He was talking to a to a to a guru who was saying that British women are like fat, overweight, they're like the least attractive people in like the European standard of beauty. Okay, here it is. This was a few years ago. I don't know if the video is going to play, but I found the article at least. Y'all might have to go look up the video because I don't see it playing. But let me at least show you the article. Okay. This was a white man who was trying to go viral by disrespecting white women. Okay, this is the oh, article here. The hell All these damn ads. Okay, you're a dick, aren't you? Pierce Morgan praised by Good Morning viewers for putting dating guru who claim British women are entitled and overweight in his place. Okay? See. They're very nice. I went to Scandinavia, Denmark, very beautiful women. But when I went to Russia, I found the whole package, the looks, the character, everything. You're, you're a dick, aren't you? Oh. I mean, you are. Your name is Richard. Oh, sorry. Yeah, literally. I'm sorry. I didn't mean, mean anything by that. Um, I meant your name is Richard. So you, you are say literally, it's more, right? you are literally you're a, a dick. You um, that, your your yeah. mother's English, right? Yes, she is. So does she also qualify as unattractive, stupid, entitled, and the rest of it? Or is she an exception? No, but she lives out there with me. Okay. So y'all just heard that. You see how quick that white British man shut that shit down? This, we ain't seen this guru since. This happened in 2017. He shut that down and said, aren't you British? Ain't your mother British? Does she qualify as ugly and overweight? Oh, uh, no, 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 Yeah, see, when it's their mamas, it's something different. It's everybody else but their mother, the one that birthed them. So again, you're not going to see that in white media. They're not going to play that. They're not going to allow white men to disrespect their own. They're going to shut that down. And But yet, when I showed the clip of the black guy talking about Kevin Samuel saying that women over the age of 35, you know, are leftovers, he was giggling. You had a whole panel laughing. I'm just saying. I'm just saying we got to do better. Um, let me see here. Oh, hold on. 
Smith, the ruler sent $199.99. Wow. Thank you so much, C. Smith. He says the color purple of America meant that the media slash feminists portrayed black men as abusive characters like Mista. The context of the clip was not to justify abuse. Okay. Well, thank you so much for that super chat. And I mean, okay, I get your point if that's what it was. Because like I said, I don't watch the show. So if it's taken out of context, I get that part of it. But do you not find it interesting that he was talking about the color purpling of America only to die on top of this woman, just like in the movie Color Purple? To me, that's even more interesting than even the context. I find that like, I just find that ironic, the whole situation. But thank you for adding further context to that. I appreciate you. Thank you for the super chat. Um, let me see here. And I had a few big super chats come through. I want to make sure I get those. So I don't miss them. Oh, Monique. Monique said $299. Monique, thank you so much. I appreciate you, sis. Monique be showing love every stream. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sis. I appreciate you. I want to make sure I thank you for that. Um, let's see here. Somebody says, I just left Target. Hold on. It just disappeared. I had so much coming on. Okay, Goth Boy says, T, you're on to something with the color purple. Kevin's last interview with elite rapper Future has ties to his death. Now, I remember seeing that video go viral uh, where he's interviewing Future, and Future's talking about he spent 3000 No, he said he spent three on a woman and Kevin's like 3,000 and Future's like, no, 3 million. I find that interesting too, because he interviewed him like back in February and the song was called Worst Day Ever. I, I just find that very interesting. Now, you know, the spicy nurse is probably having her worst day ever. I, it's just very interesting. But uh, thank you for the super chat. Uh, Ranisha says, allegedly that picture going around is stolen. And isn't the actual woman? This is getting weird. I dreamt he was killed. Ooh, now that's interesting. Because that picture's been going around all day. But if it's not her, we'll have to wait and see. So thank you. Um, Stephanie says, hey, Auntie, first time super chat. I've been watching you try to send a super chat earlier. KS died a day before my birthday, which was yesterday. I was scared because men like him died. Thank you for the super chat and happy belated birthday. Thanks for coming through, love. Um, Ashley Jean Baptiste said he even told women not to believe their daughters if they say their fathers touched them. Love you, T. My name is pronounced Ashley. Thank you for the super chat. That's crazy. Um, let's see here. Wavy Taste says, hey, Auntie, American soldier here. I love your content and you have always kept it real. Pray for us soldiers out here deployed in countries close to the Ukrainian border. And Kevin Samuels was no savior to the black community. Thank you so much. And please stay safe while you're out there. Thank you for your services for this country. We really appreciate you. So thanks. Um, let me see here. Before I go, I also wanted to say this. I want to make sure I got everything like on my notes and stuff. Okay, I want to talk about the Lauren situation really quick and who Lauren was. Let me share my screen. So Lauren was like a young black girl, uh, Lauren Smithfield. She was 23 and she died in a Connecticut apartment in December after a date with a man that she went on Bumble. And they're saying that they were like drugs in her system. They had, you know took some drugs together, and she supposedly died in her sleep. Um, the white guy hasn't been charged. I don't know if the white guy, you know, killed her or anything, but he has not been charged to this day. They're saying that it was like an accidental drug overdose. Now, one thing that I do find very interesting about the Lauren Smith situation is that, once again, it shows like the divisiveness that this, like the youth are going through. 
because of divisive adults that are pushing different narratives. Now, one of the the posts that people were using against Lauren, there were two things that went viral that folks were using against her. Go ahead and share this. Because a lot of folks, and like I said, I didn't watch the Kevin Samuels um, rendition of her situation. Nobody has sent it to me. I haven't seen it, so I can't say what he said. Um, All I can go off is what people were saying in the chat that day, but I don't have the receipts for that. But I know a few people that I was seeing on Twitter were kind of going in and dismissing this as just her being an escort. She was going after her white sugar daddy and she ended up losing her life. So this is one of the things that she had said that a lot of people were posting on uh, Twitter. So she was reposting something. Somebody named Snow Bunny wrote, me after my sugar daddy's wife drags me. So she had reposted this. Um, So people took that as, you know, she was obviously a proud sugar baby. And then she also posted this. Let me share this as well. Okay, so in this, She reposted, somebody wrote this in 2019. When I start dating white men, just know I tried my hardest with you coloreds. And she said, this is me AF, okay? Now, the reason why I bring that up is because a lot of people were saying that they don't have sympathy for her because of the things that she posted and because it seemed like she was chasing behind white man. Now say this, regardless of who she chose to date, nobody that young deserves to die, right? She still had her whole life ahead of her. But what I'm thinking is this, right? What I'm taking away from what she was retweeting and what she was posting is that we are now as adults raising a whole generation of black kids who now hate each other. I don't think people are looking at her post Because when she posted that stuff in 2019, she was even younger than when she died. These are the seeds that we are planting for the youth. That's what I get when I when I see what she's written. I see a young girl who is seeing videos by adults, okay, my age and older, making videos and saying, black men ain't shit, dead outside your race go here, look how they're talking about us. And then in the same breath, she's watching videos of black men who are old enough to be her father saying that black women are whores and sluts and single mothers. They're, they're not beautiful. They're the ugliest on the you know feature spectrum compared to other races. So y'all's not ready for that conversation. That's what I see with that young girl's post. I see a young girl who's tired and she's trying to find a way in life. The same way when I see young boys who write things like that as well. Even with the Toby situation, the reason why I couldn't give him as much grace, even though he was young when he was writing that coonish ass shit, he was still perpetuating it at his big age. He was still putting this white woman on a pedestal at his big age. He was still retweeting things that disrespected black women at his big age. He was allowing the white girl to beat his ass in front of his friends and was still holding her down at his big age. So much so the white girl done killed him and now she's gonna get off by crying white girl tears and saying she was abused. I think this is starting to be the seeds that we're planting in these young, people, these young black people, boys and girls. We have grown black women out here saying that we should be aborting black male children. We have grown black men just calling black women everything but a child of God. And y'all are thinking the youth aren't seeing this. Y'all are thinking that young girls are not internalizing this shit. 
and thinking they're not worthy, they're not pretty, so they have to go after a grown ass white man on Bumble and possibly sell themselves. It's sad. I think for me, this is what I take away from all of this stuff. And I'm sorry this stream is so long, but I, I, I think with the death of Kevin Samuels, once again, rest, rest in peace to the dead. Um, I think what I take away from him is the importance of legacy and what you leave, the type of energy. And I feel like, you know, at the end of the day, we all have to go back home, right? We all have to get called back to, you know, God or wherever, right? I think as adults, we should be thinking, what is the legacy that we're not only leaving out there for ourselves, but for our children and for other people's children? Because the fact that this man's legacy is so split and so divided is sad. I mean, I saw Black women online literally hurt, angry, crying because of the things that this man had perpetuated and said. And you have to think, when things like that are being put out there and being said, it's, re it, it's, it's being regurgitated by men in their real lives. They're being told these same words in the street. You're not good enough. You're not a 10. You're fat. You're just as big as me. So his words, people's words have power. This wasn't just a live stream for an hour or two and we're just key keying it up. People are taking the things he was saying and manifesting it, just like people are saying the things that some of these black women are saying and manifesting it. I see them all the time in my comments. Remember when I talked about the DJ Envy thing on my um, Instagram page, there were bitter Bettys in there that were mad because I'm like, I can't relate to this stupid shit that DJ Envy and his wife are going through. This is goofy. And black women who are saying, well, no, my man, you know, he makes sure I get mine. And, you know, I got a good man. I'm glad my man's not selfish like that. There were women cussing those women out. Shut up. Do you know that 35% of women never orgasm? Ma'am, speak for yourself. You can't get mad because this sister's happy with her man. We're raising a whole generation of people just being divisive and spewing out negativity and, and just horrible things for a YouTube check. And that, that to me is just really sad. It's really sad. And it's going on on both ends. And I think that's what people need to take away from this. What is your legacy going to be? Because see, before a legacy was more or less what you did in the quote unquote real world. You know, did you volunteer? Did you teach? Did you, you know, help out your community? Did you look out for people? But now more and more, your legacy is starting to be this whole internet world now what will soon be the metaverse. This is where real legacy is now being built. And the sad part is the words that you say on the internet, they never go away. So now maybe you did have good intentions, but your words are gonna be dissected, picked apart. Like the young man, he sent the super chat. He said it was out of context. So again, it's about the energy that people put out there. And people need to understand that tomorrow is not given. Tomorrow is not promised. And you have to really understand, you know, what you're putting out there, you can get back. So the whole situation is really, really sad. It, it really is. But that's what, I, that's what I take with that when I saw Lauren's tweets. You know? is that you have a whole bunch of young men and young girls who are now coming onto social media and they're being planted seeds of division, seeds of discontempt, and to hate each other as young black men and young black women. And it's the adults who are pushing this shit for a dollar. Like I always tell y'all, our money's not good money. And if I have to sit out here and give bad advice and, and say things, to other people's children that I would not want somebody giving that advice to my children, it's not worth it. So I, I think about the things that I say, I think about the things that I do because I don't wanna sit here and stir other people, you know, steer other people's children 
down a path that you know is a path to destruction. And a lot of these adults need to be held accountable for the bullshit that they're out here perpetuating that they're pushing out here. Men and women. Both ends of the spectrum. I'm tired of the niggas ain't shit mentality and I'm tired of the black women ain't shit mentality. It's only us that do this to us. Again, like I asked at the beginning of the stream, where are the Asians, the Latinos, and the white men who are doing this, who are able to make a viable career, who are able to reinvent themselves as gurus by disrespecting their own. The white boy thought he was about to do it and Pierce Morgan shut his ass down. We ain't seen that white boy since. We got to do better. I'm going to read a few more super chats. I'm going to go ahead and get up out of here, you guys. Um, it's almost been two hours. Let's see here. Uh, DMV Dreams said, preach. Thank you so much for the 199. Appreciate you. Um, let's see here. Camp sent 1999. Hey, sis. She says, just tuning in, saying that she is an RN and never showed any pics of any Crocs. I guess he was attracted to her because she was 32 with no kids. Thank you so much for the super chat. You know, I be having jokes, honey. Thanks for coming through. Um, Catfish makeup for cougars. <laughs> what? That's an interesting name. Says, God has the highest value. The black queens he created have value and worth God's people, people who everyone wants to secretly be from lips to hips. Thank you so much for the super chat, love. Um, let's see here. Donna Dash says, T, they said don't have black men's children since black men don't want to raise them and blame black women since we can't raise them. Then why have them? They are twisting it. Okay. So again, even with the Kevin Samuels thing, they can always take things and take them out of context and twist them. But, you know, I get what you're saying, but we saw evidence of a woman sending me a super chat telling me to tell people to abort that we should be aborting black boys. That to me is not okay, you know? But again, people have to decide what's right for their life. And everyone, regardless, male or female, when thinking about starting a family, should be thinking about the long term. Is this person a good fit? Just because he's a white man or a Spanish man does not mean that he can't leave you to be a single mother. Just because she's a bad, you know, spicy Instagram model does not mean that she can't leave you and get you for everything you own. So again, we have to stop thinking in terms of high value or low value and start thinking in terms of morality, integrity, and really getting to know a person's what? Character. Nobody talks about that anymore. It's just money. Money and body parts. Money and ass. What about character? What about integrity? Just saying. So thank you for the super chat. Um, let's see here. Nico Smooth. Says, Kevin and Kobe passing out of nowhere make you appreciate life. Didn't know I got time because also passed. It's all sad. I'm a big fan. Blessings. Thank you so much. Yes, he died a while ago. But this is not his song. This is uh, Reese Beats' song. So people who always ask it, the little boy made this song. No, he did not. Reese Beats made this song. So, But thank you so much for the super chat, love. Um, Let's see here. Camilla Lacey says, where are these men that are over the age of 35 to 39 with no kids? 35-year-old woman with no kids is asking. They might be in the, you know, in the live stream, sis. I don't know. But I mean, I know, I know like one or two, you know, they're not, it's not a whole lot, you know, they're like unicorns. But yeah, there's, there's some out here, you know, who don't have children. But again, it just depends on where you meet them you know, things like that, but they're here. Let's see here. Kiki Pretty Light says, I'm 25 with no kids. People consider me picky, but they have toxic relationships. I've been a fan for 10 years now. Big love from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Thank you so much, Kiki. Um, people will only consider you picky because they want you to be miserable too. Misery loves company because when you're in a happy relationship, I'm not worried about you being single with no kids. I, I really don't care. 
as long as my man is treating me right, you know what I'm saying? I'm getting that good peeing every night. You know what I mean? We're making business moves. I can't worry about you and your single life and you not having kids. So people who want to shame you and make you feel bad for not having kids and not being in a relationship right now, all the while they're in a toxic relationship and they're fighting and she's constantly trying to pull up on her dude and find out if he's cheating and creeping. They just want you to be miserable too. So just remember that, you know what I'm saying? Misery loves company. Because if somebody's happy in their situation, they're not worried about the outside world. I can't, you know, put my energy worrying about what you got going on if my man is making me happy, right? So thank you for the super chat. Um, let's see here. Zalfruit says, my mom beat cancer after having trouble conceiving me at 37. Got my bachelor's in psychology yesterday and couldn't imagine her being worthless. Wow. Well, congratulations on your psychology degree. And thank you so much for the super chat. Thanks for coming through. Definitely a miracle, baby. That's amazing. Thank you. Um, Elise says, I'm proud to announce I converted my boyfriend to an official tea sipper. LOL, we can't wait to come to your live podcast in the Twin Cities. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming through. I appreciate you. Um, Mariah Monique says, hey, auntie, I've studied his chart. His natal Pluto is transitioning Uranus. We are in the fourth house, which signifies death at home. The universe said enough. <coughs> Okay, thank you. Girl, you went real esoterical. Thank you, Mariah. Appreciate you. Uh, let's see here. Aaliyah Leak says, hey, T, love you. Happy Mother's Day. There's a video of Kevin Samuels last live. Seeming irritated with the woman he was with. It's on the Neighborhood Talk on Instagram. Hmm. I hope she didn't do anything to him. Let me see if I can find them real quick. Huh. Let me see if I can look it up. There's so much. It's going to be info coming out about Kevin um, for weeks to come. Trust and believe. Let's see. I think this is it. Okay, I'm going to share this with y'all really quick. I found it. Let's see what they're talking about on the Neighborhood Talk. Okay. Damn, they got music playing. Why can't y'all just upload stuff without music in the background? I hate that. He looks irritated. Let me see if I can just mute it. I hate when people play music because then that does, you know, it ends up copyrighting the video. Yeah, he's definitely talking to somebody. Okay, y'all might have to go there and go watch it. I would let it know what he's saying, but whatever weirdo uploaded it just needed a soundtrack. I don't know why people do that. Somebody's talking, y'all let her add soundtracks that we didn't ask for. Um, but thank you for that, Aaliyah. Appreciate you. Um, let's see here. I'm gonna read a few more and I'm gonna get up out of here. Um let's see. Mar Marita Marquita says, I had my children at 32. My 20s were spent going to school and working. Black folks down me for it. White people on average wait until 30s to start family. There's a good reason for that being maturity and stability. Well, congratulations to you. You know, I'm glad it worked out. Everybody's different. You know, it just depends on where your life is at. For me, I'm glad I had my kids young because we're just very close. You know, it's just made us closer and we talk about everything. So, but I agree. Like if you wait till you're later on in life, you're definitely way more stable and way more mature to deal with kids. So I definitely agree with that. But I have no regrets by having my babies young. Um, Let's see here. Jaysha sent 1999 says, I was in the chat last night and men were saying, black men don't care about black women with degrees. Like they are insulted because I place value 
and having an education. That's messed up. These are Kevin's disciples. Yeah. Again, everybody has to decide what they consider high value to them. So again, would you date a guy that doesn't appreciate your degrees and that doesn't appreciate education? I would hope not. That's when you have to look for somebody who also has a degree, who also went to school, who appreciates education. So that's the thing. You can't even get offended by them because they're going to have their opinions. They're going to say what they want to say. All really what you should be doing is taking notes and knowing that that's the type of guy I'm going to stay away from. All they're doing is exposing themselves. You know, so again, whatever one person doesn't value, trust and believe somebody else will. It's just you have to find that. You can't seek validation in people who don't want you or who don't see value in you. Like I always say, do not go to where you are tolerated. Go to where you're celebrated. So if they don't celebrate education, that's not where you should be. Okay? Let's see here. Um, Kim Star says, it's not the boy babies who are the problem. It's society. That's disgusting. We need to do better as human beings. Love you, T. We'll watch the playback. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming through, sis. Um, let me take one more. Um, Mojo sent 1999 and says, I wish everyone on this planet could watch your videos, especially Black people. Wow. Thank you so much. You guys, this has been a wonderful stream. I'm sorry it went so long. We had a lot of people come today. I just hope that you guys take something away from the many different things I hit on. You know, I just don't want us to be divisive anymore on social media. I don't know if it's wishful thinking. I don't know if it's ever going to stop. But I think at some point in time, we have to do better. We, we and if not for ourselves, because, you know, a lot of us are grown, but for the next generation of kids coming up after us, because we're leaving them a legacy on social media at this point of muck when it comes to the black community on social media. We have to stop being so divisive about everything, everything from male female relationships to, you know, the, the African diaspora, just the, you know, the, the continued back and forth about everything, everything. If we put that much energy into coming together and trying to better each other, you know what I'm saying, in a tactful way. Because like I said, there's nothing wrong with calling people out or talking about bad behavior, but you're going to get a lot more people to listen to you when it's done intact. You know what I'm saying? When you're talking about the facts and not picking people apart. So that that's what I hope for. So at the end of the day, just understand that your legacy is important and whatever you leave out here will be your legacy, including what you post on social media. So I just think we just all need to do better and just be careful about the energy that you put out there. So on that note, you guys, I want to thank you guys for coming through today, watching this stream. I want to thank all the mothers, okay, grandmothers, aunties, you know what I'm saying, stepmothers. Um, I want to wish you guys a happy Mother's Day. I hope you guys enjoy your day tomorrow. So thank you guys, everyone, the guys who came through and showed love, the, the females who came through and showed love. Thank y'all for coming through once again, and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.